support the ministry. And we thank you, God, for all of our members who send their tithes and offerings and their gifts of love to the house. And we thank you now that you're blessing over them right now. We thank you that you're watching over your word to perform it. We thank you that you give seed to the sower. We thank you that if we give back to give to you, you'll give it back to us. Good things are pressed down, shaking together and running over. And how we adore you and we thank you. And we stand firm on your word, knowing that you will meet all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And so therefore, God, we pray now that you will pour our blessing upon us, that we won't have room to receive and we'll forever give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, when you agree with me, shout amen. We're certainly grateful to God for all that he is doing for us in the house, and we're grateful for you being with us. Amen. Our prayer list is, is, is lengthy today, and we certainly are lifting up all of our, our those that are sick and shut in. Amen. Sharona Brooks, Jose Hernandez Jr., Demetrius Westbrook, Fidel and Millie, Savalier, Fidel and Clara Lynch, Diane Rivera. Ray Cook, uh, Pierre and Alfreda Gibbs, Margaret Pellegrino, Mike and Dorothy Johnson, Janet Harper, uh, Dave Lawson, and Milton Glass. We're certainly continuing to pray for you. We also want to pray for our bereaved families today. Amen. We want to remember Pastor George and Pastor Ramir Miriam Rosario and the passing of Miriam's mom. Amen. We want to lift up that family. We want to continue to lift up Eugene Borner and family as we held um, their brothers Mark Borner services uh, this past week. We also want to lift up the family of New Bethel Church of God in Christ in Ohio in the passing of Bishop Rance Allen. Amen. We want to continue to lift up the entire family and congregation. Amen. We want to thank you for sharing our service via Facebook Live. Amen. And Comcast. You can meet us every Saturday on Channel 25 here in the city of Chicago. And we certainly thank God for you every Friday night, every Saturday night, excuse me, at 5 p.m. Amen. We also want you to remember that this week, Wednesday, is corporate prayer night. Amen. We'll be here in service at 7 o'clock. Won't you continue to join us and be with us on November 15th? Amen. Hallelujah. We celebrate our pastors. Amen. And our pastoral appreciation service for the work that they have done. Won't you be with us in all three services? Check the website, amen, for more information concerning the service and information times. And we're certainly grateful to God for you. If you have your Bibles, turn to Isaiah chapter 10. For the scripture tells, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except he be sent? For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Won't you stand on your feet and receive the anointed man of this house? He is our senior pastor and our bishop, your virtual pastor, Dr. Ray Allen Berry Hill. I got the party started. <laughs> Which I, you know, I'll do that. Amen. But um, our hearts go out to Ellen, his wife, and to his family, to his church, to his jurisdiction. Amen. He was certainly an honorable man of God. And wherever you, you saw him or met him, he was always the same. So our love and our prayers go out to him. Amen. Well, listen, we're going to go right into the word of God. I want to thank all of you who have come out today. And let me let me say this. Um, you all did so well in, in reserving, in registering to come today. Some of you didn't. Some of you snuck in. 
Amen. I know some of y'all are a little ghetto, but we ask you to register so we can make room and everybody's comfortable and everybody feels safe. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we do this for you. Amen. Now, um, you know, we do have a 10 o'clock service and we have a 1 o'clock service. Uh, I spoke with Pastor Obed, and many of you know he lives in um, Indiana. And as such, he's not even allowed to come here in Illinois. Amen. And Sister Joanna, Melinda, we want to be praying for her as well. She left on yesterday to um, go south to be with her mother who is very ill. So we want to keep Joanna in prayer and her family, Melinda's family. And for that reason, there won't be a Spanish service at 1 p.m. Uh, they have elected to watch, amen, to, uh, to watch via streaming. For those of you who would like to come to the services, amen, if we have more than 50 people in one service, then we will go to a second service, amen. But I need to know early, amen, we can't do that on a dime prepare for it. So if you already know you want to come and you want to be in the service, and I will say this to you, there's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I love live streaming, but it just doesn't do it. Amen. Tell somebody you ought to be in the house. <coughs> now I know that there are those who say, I'm not going to church, and I'm not going here, and I'm not going there, and I'm not going to probably anybody. Amen. But I will say, if you come here, that you will be safe. We monitor your temperature, amen. We make sure that there's safe distancing, we make sure that your hands are sanitized, and we even have some apparatuses that we're gonna pull out to make sure you have no COVID on you, amen. And so we're doing all the necessary protocols, you know, to be safe, amen. Many of you saw a picture that I posted on Facebook with a packed airplane. If people can pack a plane for several hours to go anywhere, certainly we can come into the house of the Lord, knowing that God is able to keep us. And we're not foolish for doing it. Amen. There, there are people that try to make you feel bad about it. Listen, folks are going somewhere. Amen. I'd rather be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And we're not fools. We're not imbeciles. We're not all on top of each other. Everybody has a mask on. Everybody is distant. Amen. If you run, we'll let you run by yourself. <laughs> Amen. If you shout, it better be the Holy Ghost because if you fall, you're on your own. <laughs> Amen. We have no catchers. <laughs> Amen. This is one of them Aldi services. You know, you got to bring your own bag. You got to have your own help. <laughs> glory to God. But nevertheless, we're going to give God praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Right now, let's just give him the praise he deserves one more time. Amen. 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 Uh, some of my ministers were looking at me a little strange because you see, you kept seeing me wipe my eyes. Those of you who've been around me for a long time know that I suffer from sinuses. And uh, so my eyes run. I'd rather that than cough. <laughs> amen. Uh, but amen. I'm okay. So no, Pastor Adrian did not slap me. I'm good. <laughs> amen. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to open them to Isaiah chapter 10. Amen. We're going to read this. Amen. If you'll pull it up on the screen. Hallelujah. Let's read together. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Hallelujah. The yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Amen. Lord, we just thank you for this word, and I ask, oh God, now that you would anoint me, anoint my lips. Lord, I know your word is already anointed, but anoint these feet of clay. Oh God, anoint me to speak the word of life. 
oh God, I pray the directions would be changed. I pray the destinies would be sealed. I pray that somebody today would be saved. And I pray that someone today would come up to understand the anointing that they have within them so that they can begin to operate and function in it. And we ask and we pray it in that name that's above every name. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Um, Pastor Philip has already said this, but I just want to reiterate to all of you who are watching uh, all over the country and in other places, amen. I want to thank you. I know that there are many places that you could tune in, but I thank you that you feel confident enough to watch the services of this church. To my superintendent, I know that you're watching. God bless you. Amen. And then uh, to one of my sons in the gospel who is laying up on a beach in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. He told me to send him a shout out. <laughs> so I'm sending my shout out to uh, Evangelist Noel Kathy. Amen. And you better give me a like or something so I know that you heard this. Amen. And so for all of you who are viewing, we certainly thank God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Pay the price for the anointing. Pay the price for the anointing. If you've been affiliated with evangelical or Pentecostal churches for any length of time, no doubt you have witnessed and experienced great men of God, great women of God, amen, being used mightily of God down through the years, through the gifts of the Spirit. And you recognize that these individuals are not functioning on their own. They're not functioning under natural gifting, but they're functioning under the anointing because their ministry produce, produces spirit-filled results, salvation and healing and, and deliverance and miracles, which only God can do. And for most, if not all, it creates a desire within us to have that same kind of anointing. Can I get an amen? Have you ever looked at somebody and say, I want to be like that? I want to walk like that. Or perhaps you witness a Christian businessman or, 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 or a, a, a brother, a sister, who seems to prosper in everything they do. They're successful businessmen. They're successful housewives. They're successful mothers. They're terrific fathers. They, they're excellent money managers. They know how to handle their money. Everybody likes them. Everybody wants to be around them. And, and again, you recognize that this is not something natural. There's something spiritual about this. The hand of God is on them. And it's not because they cheat. It's not because they lie. It's not because they manipulate people to obtain success. It's because God has anointed them. He has supernaturally empowered them to prosper. He has supernaturally empowered them to be successful and to be victorious in all they do. And you begin to say again, I wish I could have what they have. Well, the good news is God is no respecter of person. And the good news is, just like he's anointed them, if you're a believer, he's anointed you too. Somebody say, he's anointed me too. Amen. But I come to tell you that there is a price to be paid for that kind of anointing. See, beloved, it's like living in a building that has electric flowing through the building or, or heat flowing through the building, but yet your unit can be cold, your unit can be dark, because you didn't pay the bill. Y'all not talking to me. Beloved, the fact that you have the anointing doesn't mean you're going to function in the anointing. If you want to function, if you want to operate, if you want the power of God moving through you and in you, amen, you got to pay the price for that anointing. Somebody say pay the price. So let me begin with talking about the anointing. What is the anointing? I'm so glad you asked. I call it the burden-removing, yoke-destroying power of God. Amen. And so our scripture today says, and it shall come to pass. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to happen. In that day, uh, that his burden. Let me stop right there. When it says that his burden, it refers to somebody else's burden. And what I want you to know is that the enemy places stuff on you, burdens, problems, afflictions, amen. They come from him. Is anybody getting this? Amen. They come from him. He places them on you. But it says that that burden shall be taken from off that shoulder. And the yoke, mm, a yoke is something that binds. A yoke is something 
uh, is something that enslaves. A, a yoke is something that oppresses, that hinders. He says, that yoke is going to be taken off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of what? The anointing. Amen. Y'all not shouting yet. I want you to get this. There are some challenges, there are some burdens, there are some habits, there are some problems, there's some oppression, there's some depression in your life which cannot be broken by natural means. You can't just talk it out. You can't just shout it out. You can't just have personal discipline. You can't just have education. It's going to take more than money in the bank and the right connection. Some things can only be removed by the anointing. Some things can only be destroyed by the anointing. Somebody say, Lord, destroy it by the anointing. At the same time, there is a power that's available to every believer to give you victory. Victory over sin, victory over sickness, victory over disease, victory over struggles, victory over failure. Amen. There are times you feel like you're a failure. Amen. Because you fail. I want to say to somebody, the fact that you fail don't make you a failure. Because God's able to lift you up. He's able to turn that situation around. Amen. It's the power to win. Anybody want to win in life? It's the power to get outstanding and excellent and supernatural results in your life. And just as the, uh, uh, the enemy places an anointing, if you will, on your life to fail, God places an anointing on your life for you to succeed. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I want that kind of anointing. And so this anointing, this power enables you to do everything that God's called you to do. There are some who know that God has called you to minister the word of God or minister uh, grace or minister healing, but you're afraid to do it because you look at yourself. But this power enables you to do everything God's called you to do and to do it well and to do it excellently. excellently. Amen. You can go through trials excellently. Amen. You can do the impossible excellently. If you're a singer, you can sing excellently and get supernatural results. I got to stop right here. Beloved, if I'm going to sing, I don't just want to have a nice voice. I want somebody to get delivered. Oh, come on here, somebody. You can minister and minister excellently and get supernatural results. Amen. No matter who you are, the anointing is the power. Hallelujah. It's God's power that enables you to have outstanding and excellent results. I think of one of my sisters in the Lord. Amen. And she may be watching. She called me on last week and told me how the message had so blessed her. Amen. How there was a tangible anointing that she sensed. And things began to break as the word of God was being preached. How many of you know we're not just up here talking, but things are beginning to change and things are beginning to shake and things are beginning to break because of the anointing. Can I get an amen in here? And so Jesus spoke about this, this anointing at the beginning of his ministry when he quoted the prophet Isaiah. Amen. We see it in Luke 4, but we also see it in Isaiah 61. He said, and this is what he quoted, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim liberty. I got to stop right here. Beloved, I'm anointed to proclaim liberty. In other words, I don't have to touch you. I can just say, be free in Jesus' name. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Is anybody getting this? Hallelujah. And the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. But this is the part I like. It says, that he might be glorified. Too many of us get this anointing mixed up. And we think the anointing is about us about how great we are, how holy we are, how powerful we are. But beloved, the one and only legitimate purpose for the anointing has more to do with God than it does us. See, it's not about us. It's not about you impressing others. It's not about how many miracles you can produce. It's not about how many devils you can cast out. God's purpose and intention for anointing us is that he might be glorified. God wants to get the glory. Can I get a witness up in here? Hallelujah. And so the burden removing yoke destroying power of God is available to every believer, but it does not come automatic. It does not come cheap. There's a price to be paid. And when it, you want it bad enough, you'll pay the price for the anointing. So let me talk about the price to be paid. The foundational requirement for all godly living is a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Amen. If you want to be saved, you got to hunger after righteousness. 
If you want to be sanctified, you got to hunger after righteousness. If you want to be livered, delivered, you got to hunger after righteousness. If you want to operate and function in the anointing, you got to first hunger after righteousness. Amen. So righteousness, listen, I'm not just talking about being saved from hell. I'm not just talking about the blessings of Pentecost. I'm talking about right standing and a right relationship with God. Let me stop and ask you, are you right with God? Amen. Do you know that you're right with God? That's where it begins. Amen. Don't want to give so bad that you get out of the will of God. You got to stay in the will of God. You got to live righteous lives. You got to live holy lives. Can I get an amen? And so David had that kind of thirst. David had a longing and a thirsting and a craving and a hungry. Listen, first for right standing with God and then for the manifestation of God's power in his life. And in Psalm 63, one of my favorite scriptures, he says, Oh Lord, you are my God and early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for thee, my flesh longs for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see your power and to see your glory as I've seen you in the sanctuary. I love this because David begins to, to, to reveal some things. David begins to be transparent here. He says, Lord, you already know you're my God and I'm going to seek you early. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. See, David just didn't want deliverance from a particular situation. He didn't just want to triumph over his enemies. He didn't want, just want to walk in supernatural blessings and favor. He wanted God. And that's my question today. Is there anybody in here who just wants God? Amen. All I want is God. I want God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I want God. Not the wealth, not the riches, not the houses, not the land, not the material things. He just wanted God. And I'm here to let you in on a secret. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those other things you want will be added to you. Amen. So when you get God, you get it all. Hallelujah. David wanted God. He longed for God. He thirsted after God. He desired to see the manifested presence of God moving in his life. Let me say something to you, beloved. I don't want to just have a form of godliness. I don't want to just go with a theological understanding of who God is. I need a manifestation of the power of God in my life. I need God to show up every now and then. I need God to show that he's God, that he's greater than the enemy. I need God, hallelujah, to take some stuff off of me that the enemy has put on me through the manifestation of his spirit. Amen. And when you have that kind of hunger, when you have that kind of thirst, listen to me, ordinary church just won't do. Ah, oh, you're not hearing me. Listen, I believe in order. I believe in structure. I believe in walking in excellence. But when we get through with all that, we need the power of God. We need the anointing of God. Somebody say amen. It's always in order for me to give God a praise. It's always in order for me to shout. It's always in order for me to dance. Don't you dare tell me I can't praise God in the house of God. That's always in order. And if it's not in order for you, then you are out of order. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness to the children of men. Somebody give him a praise up in here right now. If I can't praise him in church, where am I going to praise him? When you got that kind of hunger, when you got that kind of thirst, ordinary church won't do. Amen. Thank God for order. Thank God for pomp. Thank God for circumstance. But I need some anointing. The simple truth is many people have claimed to be thirsty. But the truth is most of us have never been thirsty. You just wanted something to drink. <laughs> because when you're really thirsty, there's a deep, intense, overwhelming sense of need that drives you to do whatever is necessary to quench your thirst. Come on here, somebody. Woo! If there's no water, I'll drink a pop. 
I'll drink some Kool-Aid. I'll drink whatever I need to drink to quench my thirst. Can I get an amen? And when you're really thirsty for the anointing operating in your life, you won't be content to remain like you are. You got to change. You won't be content to remain where you are. You got to come out from among them. Hallelujah. When you really want to see the power of God manifested in your life, you'll be driven to do whatever is necessary. Mama, I love you, but I can't do you today. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will do whatever is necessary. Somebody say, Pastor, what shall I do? Turn to your neighbor and say, pay the price. <laughs> pay the price. So how do you pay the price? I'm so glad you asked. Isaiah tells us in chapter 55, he says, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. Yes, you who have no money, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Oh, I love this. This is the heart cry of God. This is an invitation to everybody. Everybody. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. Amen. Every man of every persuasion, from every kindred, every tribe, every tongue, every nation, in every situation. As Reverend Evans said, you may be high, you may be low, you may be rich, you may be poor. This invitation is for everyone, but it's limited to only everyone who thirsts. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. It's an invitation to everybody, but it's especially to those who thirst. Those who are thirsty. Those who are dissatisfied with life. Those who are dissatisfied with themselves. Mm, Y'all ain't saying nothing. You looked in the mirror and you didn't like what you saw. Those who are dissatisfied with the church. Those who are dissatisfied with religion. Those who are dissatisfied with the world and with all the pleasures thereof. Because this kind of thirst, the kind of thirst that I'm talking about today, cannot be quenched by natural water. Because there's a thirsting in your soul. Oh my God. <laughs> and since God created the soul, Nothing but the things of God can satisfy the soul. So if you're satisfied with the ways of the world, you're satisfied with your $3,000 apartment, you're satisfied with your Gucci, you're satisfied with all your little designer clothes, your red bottom shoes, you're satisfied with how much money you have in the bank, you're satisfied with all your friends and high society, this invitation is not for you. not for you. But if you're tired of this world, if you're tired of the luxuries, if you're tired of the vices, if you're tired of greed and lust, if you're tired of pornography, if you're tired of illicit sex, if you're tired of alcohol and drugs, if you're tired of gluttony, eating too much, if you're tired of all the trimmings and trappings of the world which no longer satisfy, can I just stop here and say, have you ever done something so long that it don't even satisfy no more? And you wonder, why in the world am I doing this? It's not satisfying. It's not quenching my thirst. Do I have a witness in here? And you're longing for something better. You're longing for something deeper. You're longing for something more spiritual. You're longing for something more significant, more substantial. Then God says, I got just what you need. I got just what you want. And you can get it without money and without price. Because the truth is, Jesus already paid the price for it 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah. So God extends the invitation. He says, everyone who thirsts. Come to the waters. You who have no money, come by and eat. And so I love this. You, you all know, you know, I like to exegete a text. He says, come to the waters. I love this, Sister Sheila. He didn't say come to the water, but come to the waters, plural. 
because waters speak of abundance. Amen. In quantity, in quality. This is spiritual water. This is water for your soul. Uh -huh. This is the same water that Jesus said, if any man thirsts after me, let him come to me and drink. Hey, it's the same uh, uh, thing that Jesus was talking about when he says, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him, he'll never thirst again. Hallelujah. Remember when Jesus met the woman at the well? And he said, if you knew who I was, you'd be asking me to give you a drink. And the water I give you, you won't thirst no more. And she said, Lord, give me that kind of water. I ain't never had that kind of water. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of you know God will give you water and you'll never thirst again? In other words, once you get Jesus way down on the inside, you don't need nothing and nobody else. Am I in the right church? Because Jesus alone is the fountain of life. He's the fountain of living waters. And if you drink after him, you will thirst no more. And then he says, come by wine. Amen. Somebody say, all right, Reverend, you're talking my kind of language now. <laughs> he says, come by wine because wine symbolizes joy. Wine also symbolizes the move of God. Uh-huh. Proverbs 31, 6 says, give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish and wine to those that be of heavy hearts. First Thessalonians says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. Joy is the result of having Jesus in your life, not only as your Savior, but as your Lord, as your Master, as your Ruler. And I've come to tell somebody today, if you want joy, knowing Jesus produces joy. Hallelujah. And knowing his word produces joy. And Jesus says, amen, through John, he says, and these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. How many of you know that you can get full on the word? Hallelujah. You can get full on the word. Then he says, come by, not only wine, but come and buy milk. Milk is essential for growth. Milk is essential for development. There's a commercial that says milk does the body good. <laughs> Am I right about it? Well, listen to me. Today I come as your milk man. And I want to bring you the sincere milk of the word. For the Bible says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, or in other words, that you might come into a full experience of salvation. <coughs> Beloved, I don't know about you, but I want everything God has for me. I want a full experience of salvation. Have you ever seen a little baby that is waiting on his mama to get the bottle ready? Oh, my God. That little hungry fellow lying in his crib, when he sees mama get that bottle, he starts wiggling his hands, wiggling his feet. And if she's not moving fast enough, then he starts crying. He starts making a whole bunch of noise. Why? Because he has a longing. He has a hunger. He has a craving for milk, knowing that milk will satisfy. Every true-born child of God ought to love and desire, listen, the pure, unadulterated Word of God, the sincere milk of the Word of God, so much so that it makes your hands move. It makes your feet move. It makes you want to run. And just hearing the Word ought to make you want to holler. Hey! <laughs> My God, my God. And if you claim to be a Christian uh, and you don't love the Word of God, if you claim to be a Christian and you don't like to hear the Word of God, you don't like to speak the Word of God, you don't like to study the Word of God, then something is wrong with you. Because it's all about the Word. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Look at your neighbor and say, it's all about the Word. The Word was there in the beginning. And when heaven and earth passes away, the word will still be there. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will stand. Didn't he say it? Oh, uh, tell somebody it's all about the word. 
And if you only come to church for the singing, if you only come to church for the worship, if you only come to church for the activities, but not to hear your word, then you need to question your salvation. I'm not going to question your salvation. You need to question your salvation. Because real Christians love real word. Hallelujah. We're saved by the word. We're healed by the word. We're justified by the word. We're sanctified by the word. We're filled by the word. Hallelujah. We live by the word. And we can't survive without the word. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Am I right about it? So if you're thirsty, come to the waters, come to the living waters, come to the healing waters, come to the abundant waters, come to the sustaining waters, come to the waters and buy. I like this. Buy. Not just take, but buy it. In other words, you got to pay the price for it. Now somebody's going to get offended. Don't write me no letters this week. Pastor Ray, I cannot believe you saying we got a body anointing. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. And I'm going to prove it to you in just a moment. You got to buy the anointing. In other words, you got to be willing to pay the price for it. You got to be willing to give up some stuff. You got to be willing to give up some sins. You got to be willing to give up some habits. You got to be willing to give up some fleshly desires. You got to be willing to make the exchange. In other words, you're going to give up what you have to get what you want. And if you're going to receive the power of God, the anointing of God, you got to pay the price for it. That's, it's that simple. I love the way it reads in the Amplified. It says, yes, come buy priceless wine. I Did y'all see that? Buy priceless, precious, spiritual wine and milk without money. <laughs> your money ain't gonna get it without money and without price simply for the self-surrender that provokes the blessing <laughs> now that's shouting material right there hallelujah God says your surrender your, your yielding your fasting your praying have forced me to bless you I gotta bless you I, 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 I got to give it to you. You pulled it out of me because you bought it. Hallelujah. Without money and without price for your surrender. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I remember I shared it with you last week. And, and Pastor Philip, you'll remember it. And Frankie, you'll remember it. We were all there. We were just young. We were teenagers. But we wanted God so bad that our, our, our musicals would start at 7 o'clock, but 5 o'clock we would get together and we'd go down in that little nasty basement and we would cry out to God and we would pray and we would call on God and God would come into the room. Sometimes the folks upstairs had to wait until we got through downstairs to start the service because God would move. Hallelujah, there was a hunger and there was a thirst so much that God said, oh, I got to bless them. I got to touch them. I got to deliver somebody. I remember when we were doing a recording session and your brother had a, a, a cast on his leg. Amen. But the power of God moved that you went over there and you started tearing the cast off and the boy began to run by the power of God. What happened? God began to move because we placed a demand on the anointing because of the hunger that we had. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all want to be cool and calm and collected. Amen. You know, I got over here in the Assemblies of God. And, you know, if, if it was good, you'd lift a hand. And if it was real good, you might lift two hands. But where I came from, we would go for broke. We would lift both hands. We would lift both feet. We would dance. We would run. We would shout. We would holler. We would do whatever we needed to do. And God would respond because God is pleased when you give him that surrender. I dare you to just give him a surrender right now for the next day. Hey. Oh, my, 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 my. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You pay for the anointing. When you surrender yourself, you pay for the anointing. 
when you yield yourself to God. I heard him say, come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be red as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. You pay for the price of the anointing when you get like David and say, God, I'm hungry. God, I'm thirsty. I'm so thirsty. I'll get up early every morning before day to seek your face. I'll do whatever's necessary. I'll lay out on the floor before you. I'll lay prostrate before you. I'll lay out all night in prayer. I'll give you myself. I'll give you my praise. I'll give you the glory. I'll give you the honor. I'll testify. Tell everybody God's been good to me. I'll testify how you healed me, how you raised me, how you brought me out when there was no way. I'll fast. I'll pray. I'll give up my music. I'll give up my videos. I'll give up my television. I'm willing to give up whatever I need to give up. I'll give up time with my wife. Give up time with my children. Oh, if I can just function in the anointing of God. Anybody know what I'm talking about? David said, I spread out my hands. In other words, I surrender. Hallelujah. Listen, if a police was going to arrest you, the first thing he would tell you is, lift your hands. Lifting your hands is a sign of surrender. It's a sign of yielding. David says, I'm lifting my hands to you. I will spread out my hands to you because my soul longs for you as a thirsty land. You all know the story. Saul had driven David away from his homeland, away from his family, away from his friends, away from his father, away from his brothers, away from everything that was dear to him. And David went hiding in dark places. Y'all remember? David went hiding in the cave of Abdullah. Am I right about it? He lost his family. He lost his friends. He lost his country. He lost the, the temple and, and the tabernacle and the worship of God. He lost his inheritance. But despite everything David lost, there's one thing he didn't lose. He never lost his thirst for God. He said, my soul cries out for you. Listen, he wasn't thirsting for family. He loved his family, but he wasn't thirsting for them. He wasn't thirsting for friends. He wasn't thirsting for country. He was thirsting uh, for victory. He was thirsting, uh, hallelujah, for God. So much so that he was willing to pay the price for the anointing. I got to close. But my question is, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Anybody thirsty today? Hallelujah. Are you thirsty enough to leave something so something else can come? Are you thirsty enough to leave so you can come? Because look at the text. I, I looked at this, Adrian, and I said, my God. Isaiah says four times, come. Come, you who are thirsty. Come to the waters. Come, buy and eat. Come, buy milk and wine. Jesus said, if any man thirsts after me, what? Let him come. In another place, he said, whosoever will, let him come. He is calling uh, to all who are thirsty, who all who are longing, uh, for all who are yearning, uh, for all who are dissatisfied uh, in your soul. Uh, have you ever had a meal? Uh, you sat down to eat it, uh, and even though you wanted it real bad, uh, you found out uh, that what you had uh, didn't satisfy you. You said, I need a little more salt. Uh, I need a little more seasoning. I didn't cook this uh, enough or, or I cooked it too much. And even though it was your favorite meal, uh, you found out it didn't satisfy. Well, I'm here to tell you, uh, you can have everything in life uh, and find out uh, that life uh, will not satisfy you. You can have the Mercedes. Uh, you can have the $300,000 condo. You can live downtown. Uh, you can have all the jewelry. You can have all the finery, but way out in your soul, I said, way out in your soul, you find uh, 
that you're not satisfied. Anybody know what I'm talking about? How many of you know that God satisfies? I want to talk to somebody who's not satisfied. You're in church, but you're not satisfied. You're on a praise team, but you're not satisfied. You're a minister, but you're not satisfied. I want to talk to you today. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay the way you are. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay hungry. You don't have to stay thirsty. You don't have to stay disappointed. And you don't have to stay dissatisfied. Jesus said, come. Jesus said, come. Get up. Dust yourself off. And come. Come to Jesus. Come to the living water. Come to the living bread. Come to Jesus. And you'll never thirst again. Jesus will wash you. He'll cleanse you. He'll purify you. He'll save you. He'll refresh you. He'll revive you. He'll fill your soul with the Holy Ghost. He'll fill your soul with the Word of God. But you got to come. <coughs> you got to come. You got to come to the water and buy. Pay the price for the anointing of God. I'm finished. Listen to me. As I close, Moses was so anointed that the people couldn't stand to look at him. He had to wear a veil on his face because the anointing was so heavy. But before he walked in that anointing, he spent 40 days and 40 nights seeking God, seeking the presence of God, seeking God's face. What happened, Pastor? He came to the waters, <laughs> paid the price for the anointing. David was so anointed, he killed a lion. He killed a bear. Hallelujah. He killed a giant. Tom, come on here. But before he could walk in that kind of anointing, David was singing and praising and worshiping and seeking God in a nasty sheep field. Amen. I'm not saying it right. What one one am I trying to say? The sheepfold. That's what I'm trying to say. Amen. Beloved, sheep are some nasty animals. And what that tells me is David was singing in the midst of some doo-doo. I know some of y'all think I had just lost my mind. But beloved, you better learn how to sing in the midst of some doo-doo. Amen. I'm talking about the doo-doo that's going on in your life. You got to stop plugging up your nose. You got to stop complaining and learn how to praise God in the midst of all the mess that's going on in your life. Somebody need, hey! There's turmoil in your life. There's trouble in your life. There's struggle in your life. You better learn how to praise Him right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The Bible says... Uh, how God anointed Jesus, uh, who went about doing good uh, and healing all that were oppressed with the devil uh, because God was with him. But before uh, that anointing uh, was manifesting in his life, uh, the Bible says uh, he spent 40 days uh, and 40 nights uh, in the wilderness. Uh, he was already full of the Holy Ghost, uh, but the Bible says uh, after fasting uh, and after praying uh, and after denying his flesh, the Bible says afterwards. Somebody say afterwards. Beloved, something happens afterwards. Uh, after you pay the price. Uh, after you seek God. Uh, after you give God what he wants. Uh, afterwards. Oh my God. It says afterwards. He returned from the wilderness in the power of the spirit. He returned from the wilderness preaching with power. Teaching with power. Healing with power. Casting out devils uh, with power, working miracles because the spirit of the Lord had already anointed him to do the impossible, to do the unimaginable, to do the unthinkable, to do the miraculous. And even though he was the anointed son of God, he still had to pay the price for the anointing. Are you getting this? I don't care how anointed you are, you still got to pay the price. You stop paying the electric bill, your lights will go off. You stop paying the price, 
your anointing will, will diminish. It'll dry up on you. You go to pray for somebody and you find out you have no power. Y'all ain't talking to me, but I know I'm talking good. Amen. I, I, I got to close. I got to let you go. I'm, I'm preaching longer than I normally do. Because my question is, are you willing to pay the price for the anointing? Are you willing? Moses was thirsty. David was thirsty. Jesus was thirsty. But the question is, are you thirsty? Are you thirsty for God's power? Are you thirsty for God's blessing? Are you thirsty for God's favor? Are you thirsty for a move of God through you in your home, in your marriage, in your family, with your children? Then come pay the price for the anointing, for the self-surrender that demands the blessing. But God not only wants to know, are you thirsty? He wants to know, are you tired? Are you tired of trying to make things happen on your own? Are you tired of superficial religion? Are you tired of a form of godliness that has no power? Are you tired of coming to the altar and leaving the same way you came? Are you tired of coming to church and going through the motions, lifting your hands and dancing and shouting, but never witnessing or experiencing an anointing that can change your life forever? Beloved, I don't know about you, but I'm thirsty and I'm tired. And my flesh longs for the anointing of God. After all these years, I still long for the anointing of God. Hallelujah. I'm thirsty to see God's power like I saw it years ago. I'm thirsty to see the miracles like I saw it before. I'm thirsty to see supernatural favor of God. The power of God resting on my life. So I can have victory in every era. I'm walking in victory. Walking in favor because of the anointing on my life. When you're sick and tired of living without the anointing, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, when you're sick and tired of church as usual, when you're sick and tired mm, of the ordinary, when you're hungry and thirsty for the life-changing power of God, when you're thirsty enough, you'll come to the waters, when you're thirsty enough, you'll come and eat. When you're thirsty enough, you'll fast. When you're thirsty enough, you'll pray. When you're thirsty enough, you'll do whatever you need to do for transformation. When you're thirsty enough, you'll say yes to God. You'll surrender to God. You'll give it all up. When you're thirsty enough, you say, God, I'm going to give you my weakness because I want your power. When you're thirsty enough, you'll pay the price. For the anointing. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. My time is up. Forgive me for going a little longer today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this challenge that you've given us today. Lord, I pray that nobody under the sound of my voice will be satisfied where they are. Lord, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. There's got to be more. Lord, let us go after the more of God. Lord, I don't want to have to look back over my life and talk about what God did when I was 22. I want to talk about what God's doing right now. I don't want to talk about what God did when I was at some other church. I want to be able to rejoice and boast in the works of God that's taking place in my life right now. So much so that I hunger and I thirst for the presence, the power, the anointing of God. And the Lord would have you to know, beloved, that that power is available to you. You don't have to be in a certain church. You don't have to be in a certain denomination. You don't have to be of a certain persuasion. All you have to do is pay the price. Pay the price. Pay the price for the anointing of God. Give God the best phrase you can. Hallelujah. God bless you, beloved. This is Pastor Ray, and I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's live stream. 100 years from now, where you live, where you work, how much money you made will not matter. The only thing that will matter is, do you have a relationship with Jesus? I'd like to give you an opportunity to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner, 
Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and change me forever. I accept you as Lord of my life. Well, congratulations, beloved, and welcome to the family of God. And should you like to be an online member, please complete the form at the bottom of this page. And since this ministry is blessing you, please drop us a note at www.reslifechicago.org. That's www.reslifechicago.org. And consider supporting this work financially. Amen. We're about to dismiss, and Pastor Myra is standing there ready. She's putting the pressure on me, (laughs) y'all. Glory to God. Pastor Peter's behind him. He putting the pressure on me, too. Listen, I just feel led this morning. There's somebody who's watching that wants to say yes to Jesus. There's somebody in the room that wants to say yes to Jesus. And there even may be someone here today who wants to yoke up and join, be a part of this ministry. Amen. We haven't done it so much during this pandemic, but my Baptist raising was you never in the service without extending an invitation. Am I right? And so today, I just want to say, come to Jesus. We used to sing that song, come to Jesus just now. Amen. And if you're here, and if you're watching, I want you to send me a note. I want you to, uh, amen, just say, Pastor, I want to come. I I, want to give my heart to the Lord. I want to surrender to you. I want to say yes to you. And those of you who may be in the room, Amen. If the Lord is leading you to come and be a part of this ministry, amen, or, or to give your heart to the Lord, amen, hallelujah, then I want to invite you to do that. Let's just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, you see and you know all. Father, should there be anybody here today, I pray that you would save them, that you would deliver them, that you would set them free. And I pray that you would give the, fr- the freedom and the liberty to come to accept you, to receive you, and to be a part of this fellowship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. If that's you, amen. Won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Hallelujah. Kevin, you going to sing one verse of it for me? Y'all help him out. Just now. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Amen. Good morning, church family. Let us thank God for the powerful word that we received on this morning. Amen. 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 Now let us pray as we conclude the service on this morning. Let us rise up and let us pray together. Say hallelujah. 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 Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the word that we received on this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence that was so heavy, God, and tangible in this place today, Father God. And we pray, Father, that for those that are not here physically, God, that they would just sense your spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now in this moment. And they would begin to hear your voice, Father, and you calling them closer to you, Father. God, today we hear you loud and clear, Father, that Father, that you desire for us to get close to you. Now we pray, God, that we will continue to have a deep hunger and thirst after you, Father God. And as the word of God says, Father, in Matthew, Lord, Father, that as we hunger and thirst for righteousness, we shall be filled in the name of Jesus, God. So we just pray that you would continue to stir us up, Father God. Father, we pray that this week that you would show us, God, what it is that you want us to surrender, Father. 
what it is that you're asking us to give up, Lord Father, or to let go, oh Father, so that we can go into your presence, into the Holy of Holies, and find everything that we need, Father God. And Father, pay the price, Father God, for the anointing that you have for us, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. And we thank you that it is you that gave the biggest sacrifices, all, Lord Father, so that we would look to that as an example, Father, of how we are to surrender, God. So we thank you, God, for the encounters that we will have this week, Lord Father. We thank you for the testimonies, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. And we just pray, Father God, that you would just continue to refresh our pastor as he gave on today the word that you would bless him and keep him in the mightiest name of Jesus. Amen. Now the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Thank you for listening. If you have decided to receive Jesus as your Savior, we'd like to support you in your new journey. So please let us know in the comment below. Welcome to the family. Now, join us Wednesday at 7 p.m. and again Sunday at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 1 p.m. in Spanish for worship and the word which will change your life forever. Now to then, from Dr. Ray Allen Berryhill and the Resurrected Life Church family, walk with the King and be a blessing. Amen. And don't forget, November 3rd. Amen. We voted too. If you haven't voted, vote. Amen. I'm not going to tell you who or how. Just exercise that right.